So today we're going to be talking about how we turn the Sony A6700 into something much more substantial, like this. So you might be asking yourself, what's the benefit to building a camera up to be this size? And the main reasons we do this is one, it adds a lot of functionality, right? You've got a lot more accessories that you can add to the camera. You've got external monitors, focus pulling equipment, matte boxes with extra filters, all powered off of one battery that is hot swappable that you can sort of change in and out. It's incredibly beneficial. Now, sometimes you're not gonna want your camera to be rigged up this large. I understand that, so this build in particular is very modular, can be taken apart and used in any sort of configuration. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna strip this down back to the camera basics and build it all the way up and talk about the reasons for each part that I'm using and why I enjoy this rig so much. So at the very core of this rig, we have the Sony A6700 in the small rig cage. And you might've noticed we've got a couple of NATO rails and attachments based off onto this, onto the cage itself. We'll talk about that in just a second. But the Sony A6700's cage by small rig, um, I think is a fantastic option to go for. Um, but it comes with an HDMI clamp, which is fantastic. Um, loads of mounting options. I love the cold shoe on the top that you can use. So that allows you to um, add things like microphones and stuff like that. I love that it sits at a slight angle from the top. That allows you to have, uh, it allows your equipment basically to not get too much in the way of things like external monitors. And there's a lot of mounting points. My only complaint with this whole rig is I just wish that it had a built-in NATO rail on the top so you didn't have to add one yourself, but you know, those are not super expensive to have to add on, so not too bad. It's also got a quick tool that you can use to attach the cage to the camera. It's got two mounting points, which are fantastic. So it's got a small little screw that goes into the, the strap on the bottom and then a quarter 20 thread on the bottom there. Um, and, and that just allows the camera to not sort of move inside of the cage itself, which is super handy. Now I've gone ahead and I've attached two NATO rails, one to the top, which is a very small little NATO rail on the top, and a longer one on the side. Now we're gonna talk a little bit more about the one on the side here in a little bit, um, but that's gonna be for our side handle. And the other attachment that this cage has built into it is an Arca Swiss plate on the bottom, and we're gonna be using that in a little bit. Now the first accessory that we're gonna be using for this camera is obviously a lens. No matter what rig you build, the one thing that everybody needs is good lenses. That makes a huge difference for the image quality that you can get. So for this rig, we're gonna be using these. This is a set of Cinema Primes by ZY Optics. I've got a review on the channel using these with the Sony ZV-E10, but it comes in a set of three. We've got a 20 millimeter, a 35 millimeter, and a 50 millimeter, and they open up all the way to T1.0. Now, are they perfect to T1.0? No, but I use these at, two, at T2 or T2.8 all the time, at which point they're incredibly sharp and very usable. They're pretty compact for cinema lenses, um, and I think they look great. The image quality that comes out of them is really fun, um, and having a full set that have great color matching and open up all the way to T1.0 is fantastic. Now, another benefit to using a full set of cinema primes is that they all line up. They're all roughly the same weight, the same size, uh, and all of their gears line up. So whenever you're attaching follow focus systems, stuff like that to these lenses, they all line up. You can swap them out super easily with each other. But for now, we're gonna start with the 20 millimeter. We're gonna attach that to the camera because um, I think the 20 millimeter, I think the tone, I think the 20 millimeter is my favorite. It gives you a 30 millimeter equivalent and that on the Sony A6700, I think is a fantastic pairing. So we'll go ahead, get that sensor covered up because I know how many of you freak out how, at how often I leave my sensor exposed. It's a pretty clean environment. I do look after my stuff, but this is it. So already we have a nice combo of a nice cinema lens, a full lens set on the A6700. One of the benefits to using cinema lenses, which are all manual, that don't have any electronic connections, is that actually this helps with overheating. The camera doesn't have to do quite as much work trying to keep up with autofocus, read the f-stop, transfer that, and control the f-stop with the camera. You do all of that on the lens, that just helps the processor a little bit better. If you wanna see a comparison test of using manual lenses to autofocus lenses for overheating, let me know in the comments down below, I'll make that video separately. Now there are two handles that we're gonna be attaching to the cage. Now there's a top handle and a side handle. For our top handle, we're gonna be using this. This is a Nitsi Stinger Mini handle, or Little Stinger, I think it's called. Um, it's their version two, and it's a fantastic little handle. It's got a NATO attachment on the top, and it takes up very little space, super comfortable to hold, um, and is very lightweight. So that just keeps the weight of the whole rig down a little bit. And I've gone ahead and I've attached a cold shoe mount on the front of this handle. That is gonna be for our monitor mount. 
Basically, I would advise you to use whichever monitor mount that you have available. If you're purchasing, purchasing a new one, I've got some recommendations for you, but um, I'm gonna be using a cold shoe uh, monitor mount, and we'll get to that in just a second. So we can go ahead and attach that on to the top, get that screwed down. Um, the nice thing about this one is it does have a ratchet um, uh, NATO screw on the top. That means that if your lens is really big, kind of like these ones are, you don't have to worry about scraping the lens trying to get attached. You can attach it nice and easy. And here we have our top handle already. This is a great little rig to use uh, on the go. Um, you've got the screen of the camera, great lens, and a top handle It just helps you carry it around. A little bit extra stabilization while you're filming. Great place to start. But obviously we're gonna keep going. We're gonna make this bigger and better. One of the things we're gonna add is a is an external monitor. So the monitor that we're gonna be using is this. This is the Port Keys LH5P Mark II, LHP5, I'm not sure, I'll put it on the screen up here. Um, and it is a fantastic little monitor. It's a 5.5 inch monitor. It's pretty bright, I think it's like a thousand nits. Um, again, I'll put all the details on the screen here. And on the bottom, I'm using a small little um, cold shoe to sort of quarter 20 monitor mount that came with a previous accessory that I've used. The reason I'm using that is because it's one that I have available. And you're gonna see this come up a lot whenever I'm building up this rig. The best thing to do whenever you're building a rig is use the equipment that you already have. I had this small monitor mount lying around, so I'm gonna use it. But if you don't have one, I'll leave a recommendation down in the description below. So we'll go ahead and attach that to the top handle. And uh, there we have a nice monitor on top of our rig. This allows me to have a better view of the camera, but the other great thing about this monitor in particular is that it actually allows you to wirelessly control the camera. So if I go ahead and turn both of these on, I've got a small battery on the back here. We'll talk a bit more about these batteries in a second. Um, if I go ahead and turn this on, the camera is turned on and the monitor is turned on. There's no image going to it, okay? So currently, um, the only image that I can see is on the camera, so no HDMI cable. But the back of this monitor has a little um, Wi-Fi antenna and what this allows us to do is to connect this camera to the monitor wirelessly. Now, it won't stream video wirelessly. That would be kind of crazy. So what this allows you to do is that you can have the camera wirelessly connect to the monitor and I can control my shutter speed and I can change the shutter speed on the monitor here, uh, which will change it on the camera, which is really cool. Uh, you can change your shutter speed and your ISO uh, and your iris or your focus. Now, obviously we cannot control the iris and the focus, um, because this lens is manual, so that just means that I'm gonna be changing that on the lens itself. And another great feature that this has is I can start and stop recording using the monitor, and it will start the recording on the camera. It's not gonna do that right now because there's no SD card in there, because I'm using one of my SD cards. So, um, But that's just one of the really handy things about this monitor is yes, you can get the feed, which we're gonna attach here in a second. We've got a HDMI cable, micro HDMI to HDMI up here. Um, so we can obviously get a better view of what we're filming, but also we can control the camera through the monitor rather than having to go through um, or use the dials, especially when you've got it built up in a big rig. Sometimes you can't access everything, but we can access it on the monitor itself. So next we're obviously just gonna go ahead and attach the cable. Now we have full functionality where I can see on the camera and the monitor and control the camera through the monitor itself. This is a great little combo. I think this is one of the best monitors for this camera if you're needing an external monitor. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and attach a side handle. Now this side handle is an interesting one. It's by Tilta. Now what this will allow us to do is pull focus um, later with our external follow focus system. It's got a NATO rail on the side, um, but also it's just a super comfortable handle to use. Um, it's got a small battery, the same one that's on this monitor um, on the inside. So it's got its own separate battery to control the, the focus motor. Obviously this would be a very expensive handle to use without um, actually using it for pulling focus, but we're gonna get to that in a little bit. This whole rig is designed to be very versatile. So what this allows you to do is if you tuck this cable in and um, keep it tucked in there, and here we have our handheld rig. So currently we have our lens, our, our camera, side handle, top handle, and the monitor. Now, if you're not gonna be using any manual focus lenses, you wanna stick with autofocus lenses only, um, you're not gonna need this handle because this handle is primarily designed to pull focus later. So what I recommend is picking up this. This is a beautiful little um, wooden side handle, also by Tilta, with the exact same connection, the NATO rail, and it'll just slide onto the side there. Um, so if you're not planning on using manual focus lenses, and autofocus only, then this will do you just fine. Now, another important part of getting a great image out of a camera is to have filters on the front. So things like um, ND filters or mist filters, things like that. Um, I'm using an ND and mist filter by Freewell. It's one of my favorite filters. I bought it a long time ago. 
and I love using it. But recently Freewell reached out and they sent me their Iger Matte Box. So this is a new matte box system by Freewell. Um, it's, it's bigger than my usual one, which would be the small rig um, mini matte box. But what this does is it allows you to stack multiple filters. So inside this matte box, I have an ND module, a variable ND module, as well as a mist filter. So in here, I've got a magnetic mist filter that's in there. Um, and the amazing thing about that is it's a quarter stop mist filter, um, which is kind of like my ideal spot for adding mist or diffusion onto the lens. And it's only $50, which is really cheap for a mist filter. The Tiffin Black Pro Mist is about $100. And this is one that fits inside this matte box. And the matte box is about 150. With the mist filter, you're talking about $200 for just this, which I think is a great deal. And then you've also got your variable NDs that you can add on the top. And um, I can't remember the exact price of that. I'll leave that on the screen here. But I think this is a fantastic place to start. Um, you've got this little knob on the top here that allows you to change the density of your variable ND. Um, which is really nice. I've got the two to five stop in here at the moment. And this comes with a bunch of step up rings. So these are little step up rings that you attach to the front of your lens to allow you to clip the matte box to the lens. Now, one of the things I love that Freewell has done with these is that you can go online onto Amazon and just buy multiple of whatever size you need. Sometimes other, other companies like Smallrig or um, Tilta, their mini matte boxes, it's actually a bit of a hassle to try and find the step up rings to be able to attach it to your lens. And typically the kit only comes with one of each. So for example, with this lens kit, they're all 77 millimeters filter threads. Now the kit only comes with one, but I can go on and for $15 buy another one or for $30 buy two more. So all three lenses can just have these uh, filter threads attached on top. So we'll go ahead and we'll take the 77 millimeter filter thread and attach it onto the front of the lens. And then what you can do is on the matte box itself, it's got these two little pull tabs on either side here. Just pull those apart and that will open up and allow you to clip it onto the front of the lens. And once we have that attached, we can just go ahead and tighten down the screw. And here we have a really nice handheld rig. Now currently we're using the batteries inside the camera and on the monitor. But if you just want to go more handheld, you don't want to build up the full big rig, this is a great place to start. If you're on a, a specific budget, you know, this is a, a good sort of rig. I'll have all the numbers on the screen. And, and I think this is a nice place to start. And the really nice thing about this is this whole rig will is completely detachable from the entire rig that we're about to finish building. So if you want to go handheld, have a smaller, it's still pretty chunky, but a smaller rig, maybe you're wanting to use this sort of wooden handle instead. Uh, this has everything except for the external battery and the focus motor that we're going to be adding here in a second but I think this is a pretty cool place to start. So I'm gonna set this off to the side for now, and what we're gonna be building next is our base plate. So this is the base plate that all of this attaches to and has a quick release system. So you can just pop this on and off of the full big rig. Now, so far, this rig build has been relatively simple, okay? Not a whole lot of attachments to do. You've got a couple of NATO rails to go on the top and the side, and then you just go ahead and attach the handles uh, and the monitor and stuff like that. Things are gonna get a little bit more complicated here and um, just as far as attaching a lot of different pieces to make it all work together. Um, but trust me, it's worth it in the end. So everything is going to get attached to this. This is a this is a 15 millimeter base plate um, that is super low profile. As you can see, the rails are gonna sit really close to the bottom here. That just keeps the whole rig very compact. Now this is the one that is designed for the Blackmagic Pocket 6K Pro and the 6K G2 and um, because it's, it's quite a tall camera. So this uh, allows the rail to get a little bit higher. But for me, I like to keep the rails very compact there is a set distance that you're supposed to use to between your rails and the lenses but I like to just have them as close as possible it just keeps it nice and compact now one thing that you're going to want to pick up whenever ordering um, parts to build up a rig like this are multiple packets of the small rig little um, cases of screws so the quarter 23 screws the and the 3 8 screws um, and because you're going to need, be needing a lot of those just to attach them I'd recommend picking up two packs of what of the ones that are listed in the description so again everything is going to be based off of this 15 millimeter rod base plate so the first thing we're going to attach is our Nitsi uh, v-mount quick release plate now you could actually go ahead and attach this straight to the bottom because it's got some screws here. You could attach that straight onto the base plate and that will work just fine. Now, now if you choose to use this one and you attach this straight to the base plate, you'll have access to the DC port and the DTAP port on one side. The USB-C port and the DTAP port on the other side, you will not have access to because the screen is going to sit there. Now it will keep the battery a little bit lower, um, which is kind of nice, but um, you're limited to these two ports. Um, personally, I want to use this USB-C port down the line, so what we're going to have to do for that is attach it to a cheese plate just to raise it up a little bit higher um, instead of it sitting right up against the 15mm the rail base plate, it's going to sit up about a half inch. 
And our way of doing that is that we're going to take this and we're just going to attach it straight onto this cheese plate. Now this cheese plate in particular is actually a top plate for a Canon C200 cinema camera. And it's nice, I really like it as a little cheese plate, um, but honestly it's pretty hard to find. I'll leave an alternative down below that's going to work just fine. I like this one because it just fits nicely. It's kind of a little bit more uh, snug and just sort of clean looking. So if you can find this one, great. If not, I'll leave an, an alternative in the description down below. Now the Nitsi quick release place comes with two of these screws. I've lost one. I, I've been trying to find it around the, around the studio, but um, I'll probably find it as soon as I finish filming this video, but these two holes on the front here, you're going to want to put the screw um, through these holes uh, and the other one in the second hole, and then that's going to attach to this cheese plate. Now, the nice thing about this cheese plate is there's so many holes, you can choose how high or low you want it to be on the rig. And the holes that I'm going to be using are these two close to the top and these two here. And that just gives me the right amount of clearance that I need to attach that. And we're going to take our Allen wrench, which I'm going to talk about a little bit later, this little Allen wrench and attach that straight to the rig. And again, obviously I would encourage you to use two screws, but this is basically what you're going to end up with. Nice little, nice little cheese plate thing here. So I've gone ahead and I've attached two uh, quarter 20 screws into this cheese plate and you'll see them there. Um, they, they sit in here all right. You kind of have to force them through that hole at the top there. Um, so if you have trouble putting those in, you just kind of have to thread them through yourself and just be a little careful. But once they're through, they kind of stay there, which is nice. And we're going to attach those to the bottom of the cheese plate. Again, if you don't want to use the cheese plate and you want to just go ahead and just use straight to the, uh, the Nitsi V-mount plate, you can kind of just attach it to those ones. I'm going to use the ones here on the, on the cheese plate itself. So then your part is going to look a little bit like this, just an L shape. You've got your 15 millimeter rails will go in here and your V-mount battery is going to go on the back. Um, again, the reason I've raised it up a little bit higher with the cheese plate is I just wanted to use this USB-C port on the side to use power delivery to the camera. And I'll give you a reason for that in a little bit, but we'll get there. Next, we're going to use another one of these little screws and it's going to go into the middle um, of the base plate here. That's going to go through there. And what we're going to attach that to is this. Now, this is a little Arca Swiss plate um, with a, a sort of little knob on the top that you can tighten or loosen um, to attach an Arca Swiss attachment. Now, if you remember correctly, the Sony A6700 cage has an Arca Swiss plate built into the bottom. So what this allows us to do whenever we attach this to the bottom, um, again, ideally you're going to be using two screws, but because this cheese plate is pretty solid, just have it lined up straight against the back of the cheese plate and that's going to lock it in place. It's not going to swivel, but we're unfortunately only able to use one screw here to hold it in place. And there we have it. So now we have our cheese plate on the back with our Nitsi V-mount plate, our Arca Swiss quick release and our 15 millimeter rails. Now I'm, the 15 millimeter rails I'm going to use are these by Condor Blue. Um, you can use any ones that you want. The carbon fiber ones are nice. These are aluminum. They've got little holes in them. They look kind of nice. Don't tighten these ones too hard because you can bend it, at which point they're kind of hard to fit in other things, but they really don't need to be tightened down too hard. So we'll go ahead and just slot those into place here. And there we are. So here we have um, the bulk of the base plate done. The only other things we're going to be adding is a tripod plate and our follow focus motor. Now the, the motor I'm going to be using is this one. This is the Nucleus N. This is the old version. There is a new version which is actually cheaper than this one. It's about $120. Um, so I would definitely encourage you to get that one instead of this one. The reason I'm using this one, again, like other things, is because this is what I have. I don't, you know, it'll, it gets the same job done as the new one. Um, it's got a little bit less torque, but that doesn't bother me. Um, and instead of spending an extra $120 and just having this sitting on a shelf somewhere, I'm just going to use this one uh, and eventually when I need to, if this one breaks, I'll go ahead and pick up the new one. But if you don't have one, definitely get the new one. It's going to work a lot better and it uses USB-C instead of this, which uses this stupid micro USB. I'm kind of glad that that's gone for the most part, but we'll go ahead and attach that onto the rails and we'll get that lined up later. So there we go. The last thing we're going to add is this. This is the tripod plate from the... And the last thing we're going to add is this. This is a tripod plate from the small rig tripod, which I have a video about. You can check it up out here, here, one of the, one of those corners. Um, it's my favorite tripod. It comes with this really nice little tripod plate. It's very simple. It's Manfrotto 40502 uh, tripod plate. But my favorite thing about this is it's got a little Allen key that gets to hide inside the plate itself right there. So every screw in this build uses this Allen wrench, which is just really handy. 
you're never going to lose it. It just sits inside your quick release plate. If you don't want to buy a whole tripod to get a quick release plate, if you already have a tripod you don't want to, that you can use, any quick release plate is going to work just fine. Um, I just like that this one has that. Um, and if you don't have a tripod, definitely check out that tripod because I think it's fantastic. So we're going to go ahead and we'll take the um, tripod plate and we're going to attach it to the bottom of the 15 millimeter base plate. Uh, and again, this basically just allows us to attach it to a tripod easily, but also gives it a little bit of a base to sit on. So whenever you have the camera built up in a rig, you don't want it sitting on an uneven surface. This gives you a nice sort of plate at the bottom and it's gonna sit nicely right there. And the last thing you're gonna need is a, a, a good battery. Now this is a battery by Andy Sinning and it's my favorite V-mount battery. Um, it just has a ton of outputs on the top if you need them and a, and a handful of really nice features. I've got a video about it as well. So if you wanna know more, more about this battery, just check out the video. Um, but this is gonna work great for us. So we'll go ahead and attach it to the quick release plate. So to put the two together, it's actually really simple. All you're gonna to need to do is take your camera, open up the monitor and get it all the way open. And now your camera using the Arca Swiss plate on the bottom can attach directly onto the quick release Arca Swiss plate there. Get that lined up nice and centered, reach underneath and tighten up the Arca Swiss plate. And now you have a rig that sits like this. You can open up the monitor to sit up against the battery. Um, the battery sticks out a little bit farther than the monitor. That's actually kind of important because if you were to drop this or something, you don't want it to land directly on the monitor. So thankfully this just gives it a little bit of a cushion if it lands on the back like that. Now here we have basically the, the completed rig. The only thing we have to add are a few cables. The cables that we're gonna be using um, to power all of the devices. You'll notice that this monitor is already on because it has a small NPF 550 battery on the back. And this comes with a DC to like this little five pin Limo connection. And what that allows us to do is you can use the DC port on the side of the Nitsi battery plate or if you wanna use the one that's on the battery, you can do that. We'll talk about that in a little bit. And then you can plug the five pin directly into the monitor. And now that this battery is gonna be powering the monitor. Um, itself. The battery that's on the back of the monitor is basically going to act as a backup. So when this battery dies, the monitor is not going to turn off. And what that means is instead of having to wait until this dies um, and sort of panicking, everything will stay on. You can unplug this battery, grab a new one, plug another one in, and we're going to hot swap the power without ever anything ever dying. And we can do the same thing with our camera. Most people are gonna recommend you to use a dummy battery and that's fine. If you want to use a dummy, dummy battery, do go ahead. And it sometimes is definitely the better option to use um, because sometimes you might run into overheating with the option that I'm gonna go with. But what I'm gonna do is use this super short USB to USB cable. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna attach the US, one side of the USB into the USB-C port on the camera. That's gonna act as power delivery. Uh, and then the other USB-C is going to go into the side of the Nitsi plate. Now, if you don't wanna do this and you wanna use like a D-tap to um, a dummy battery, that's perfectly fine. You'll have the access to the D-tap on the other side of the battery um, plate here. But for me, I kinda like to use the USB-C. I think it works really well. Um, and it gives us better quick release options. We'll get back to that in a second. And then the only other cable that we have is to attach from our motor into this handle. And there we have that. So now the motor is connected to this handle and what you do is all you have to do is press the button on the top and that's gonna turn on the motor and the handle itself. You're gonna to wanna to get the motor lined up and connected to the gears of whatever lens it is that you're using. So obviously we're gonna get this one connected to the lens um, there. And there's a little calibrate button on the side of this handle. You're gonna hold that button and it's going to calibrate the wheel that is on the end of the tilt -a handle to the motor that is connected obviously to the whole camera rig. It's just gonna do its own little calibration thing here. You can see it's figuring out where the stop and the end points are. Um, and now what we can do is with this little wheel that's on the front here, we can control the focus, which works great. So this is the completed rig. But again, one of the things in my opinion that is the best thing about this rig is its customizability or its quick release option. So again, if I'm wanting to use this as a big rig or stick it on a tripod and get really long battery life, I can do that just like this, okay? I've got my battery plate and it'll slot on just fine and I can use that and I can pull focus or if I'm not doing a super long shoot, this just works great as a cool handheld big rig. But let's say I want to go back and forth between having a smaller, simple rig and this big rig. All I have to do is unplug three cables and I'm good to go. I unplug the monitor which is not gonna die because the battery is inside the, because the battery on the back of the monitor is gonna keep it running. I'm gonna unplug the motor from the handle and unplug the USB-C cable from the camera. And then we just reverse the process. We can open our, open a monitor, loosen the Arca Swiss plate, and the whole thing 
just slides right out. And now we have the two separate parts. We just leave this on our tripod, and this is now my little handheld rig that I can sort of go around um, and, and operate like this. And I think this just works great. So typically what I've been doing when I use this at a wedding, I had this on the big on a tripod, and then for ceremony and stuff like that, I was able to just attach this, um, run around, use this handheld for most of the day, and then whenever I was ready, go ahead, just open up the monitor, slide it in, uh, attach all the cables that I need to attach, lock it into place, good to go. And so with a little bit of cable management here and there, you can end up with a really nice looking rig that's, that's versatile, you can take it apart, you can use it in this large format or you can take it down to a handheld rig. You can just, if you want to, you can just pop off this whole matte box. Let's say if you don't want to be using that and you want to make it even smaller, um, you can do that. Same with the top handle and the monitor, whatever you want to do, everything pops off and pops on very easily. And to me, that's just super handy when you're trying to build yourself a nice cool rig um, that is versatile and easily used. But I want to know what you think about a rig like this. Do you think that this is completely overkill for a $1,400 camera to spend this much money? Um, or do you think this is a much more beneficial and fun way to use the camera? I enjoy building rigs. I think it's fun. I think it's enjoyable. But the only downside to this is people, I think, a lot of time assume that this is going to make you a better cinematographer. That is not the case. The camera, the lens, and the filters are basically the main thing that are going to give you the image that this camera produces. The batteries, the quick release plates, the focus motors, the monitors, all that sort of stuff is super handy and really nice to use, but it's not actually going to make you a better filmmaker and it's not going to make you capture better footage. But if you're interested in learning a little bit more tips and tricks on how to get better footage or the right kind of lenses to use for situations or how to light a studio or a talking headshot or whatever it might be, you might want to hit the subscribe button. I've got a lot of cool videos planned. I'm really excited to keep doing this um, and I appreciate all of you for doing so. If you've enjoyed this video, you're still watching, you're interested in any of these parts, go down below, hit the like button, drop a comment and look in the description because all of the parts that are listed here are in the description down below. Those are affiliate links that really helps out the channel. It allows me to build this sort of stuff and have a bit of fun with it for you guys. And if you'd be interested, I'd really love it if you would consider hitting the subscribe button. It really helps out the channel grow. I'm so excited to see where we're going to go with this, but overall, I hope you've enjoyed it and I hope that you have a wonderful day.